I spent a year and a half learning game development with no prior experience. Here's my progress in five minutes. And you might also find out the questionable life decisions I made along the way. It all started over Christmas break during the time that I was doing my master's degree in AI. I decided that instead of talking to my family, I'd rather not talk to my family and learn a new skill. And so I opened up the Unity editor for the first time and got to work. This is my first project in any game engine ever. When I did this project, I had no idea how Unity even worked at all. I had no knowledge of 3D modeling, animation, or how to get that into my game. But luckily I was able to abuse the Unity asset store and scrap together my first game. Anyways, the goal of the game is simple. Survive. Welcome to the Gulag. If you survive, you earn your freedom. Oh, whoa, what was that? You can eat apples to get bigger, and if you're bigger than other chickens, you can eat them. But that also means other chickens can eat you. Oh no! Besides apples, there's also other power-ups that temporarily can make you faster, slower, bigger, or smaller. Oh no! You're kidding me. Honestly, this game was way better than I expected. I didn't actually expect people to enjoy something that I created. And this was the moment that definitely hooked me into game dev for the rest of the year. My second project in Unity ever, where I recreate from scratch Fortnite. Just kidding, I just make a shooter. So game development is still kind of a mystery to me, and this is the first time I've ever touched Blender. I'm not really an artist, so bear with me on these models. And this is the first time I've tried to use animation myself in my game, and then I slapped it together with a physics controller, and you get this. Wow, that's basically better than animations coming from AAA studios, right? And then I got some shooting mechanics working, and then guess what? I got bored and sidetracked with school, so I moved on to my next project. Now a couple of months have gone by, and I feel like I actually kind of know how game dev works, and I want to tackle a bigger project. At the time, I was playing games like Baldur's Gate, so I want to try making a strategy game. So I created a grid-based system to do movement and actions, and this is actually the first time I've ever done any UI. Oh, 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 oh. Really? And after doing a lot of this project, I realized I really don't like making strategy games. It requires a lot of systems that you have to put together and understand how they work, and it's just kind of not fun. So I decided to ditch this project and leave strategy games to a developer with a bigger brain. So during this year of learning game dev, I've kind of felt like school has been a major pain in the ass. Through the almost endless amounts of classes and assignments, I felt like I've only touched the surface of game dev. But then, somehow, in a crazy turn of events, I managed to finagle my way into basically doing a game dev project for school. So instead of doing a project on AI where bugs turn into hours of grueling debugging, uh, at least bugs in game dev basically become extra features. Trains. Pedestrians walk around the train station and do different things that people do in a train station. And it's my first time using Unity Nav Mesh, which allow characters or enemies to navigate the environment. And this is actually a two-part project, where the pedestrians can open doors, depending on certain attributes like hurriedness as well as kindness. So sometimes pedestrians will just rush through the door, or they'll hold it open for someone else. So will this help me in future game dev projects? Not really. So one of the biggest things I've learned about game development is scope is really important. A lot of these other projects, I've kind of had an idea, but the idea has been too big and not actually implementable in a short amount of time. So that's why I decided to make my dream game, Fortnite. Well, actually, I decided to make Fluffin' World, a classic precision platformer. Unlike my previous projects, I came into this one with a singular, unwavering goal. I'll do whatever it takes to get this game on the Steam. So I quickly got to work and crunched through the first three months of development, using everything I had learned from a year of game dev. First, I built a playable prototype, and it was way more responsive than I expected. This filled me with hope for the rest of the project. After, I soon realized that if this was going to be a full game, it needed an iconic character. And using my slightly okay blender skills, I made this character, and I also added my own animations. But then I realized, it still kind of looks like shit. And that's why I used some shader techniques to clean it up a little bit. And it gives my main character hair? Fur? I don't know. And thus, the name of the game became Fluff and Roll. And after binge watching a ton of YouTube dev videos, I figured it would be smart to create a Steam page as quickly as possible. And that would mean I would need some visual differences to spice it up. So I built four distinct environments, levels for each, and boom, I had a Steam page. The art might be a bit questionable, but I was happy that I stuck with the goal instead of abandoning it like my previous projects. And then before I knew it, I graduated. And currently, I don't have a job. So that makes me an official indie developer. That's not how it works. Anyways, that pretty much takes us to today, in which it's been 1.5 years since I started game dev. Nice. And lately, I've been adding features to my game to make it more crazy, like bumpers, jump pads, and boosters. Even more recently, I've been implementing some pretty boring features that are needed in a fully released game. The settings menu, persistent saving, controller support, rebinding, and more. And I guess that's why I haven't made a video in 67 six days. 
So if you want to see more videos from me, be sure to be subscribed and leave a comment for what I should do next. And make sure you wishlist Fluff and Roll.